Wonders on the Wabash is a free rafting experience designed by the Tippecanoe County Partnership for Water Quality for sixth grade classes in Tippecanoe County. The students participate in an all-day environmental education program on the mighty Wabash. There are stops along the way to do experiments, along with on-the-raft learning. We wanted to get the kids down to discover the river and begin building that love and vested interest in the river from an early age. And we want them to understand their impact on the river. Their daily lives and how they go about living their lives has a significant impact on the river. One of the important concepts we want the kids to understand is the watershed that feeds into the Wabash River. That area of land around the river that drains to that point that informs the kids that no matter how they go about their daily life can impact that river by how they're treating the land, how they're treating storm water and rainfall. It's important not just to enjoy the wildlife, but also to understand that what the wildlife can signify is the health of the river and the watershed. And if wildlife is present, depending on what type of wildlife that is, it can let you know is your river healthy or is your river not healthy. We wanted the kids to understand that pollution is not just a chemical, it's also the natural sediment. When we don't take care of the river and the land along the river and keep it from eroding into the river, sediment can become a pollutant also. We wanted the entire day to be kid-focused and kid-centered where the kids are out taking part, doing water tests, learning about the different components scientifically of water, temperature, pH. We want the kids to understand how the river impacted the development of Indiana and our nation and how it continues to have an impact on our country and our state and our local county. A key part of this really is just getting the kids to become invested in that river and make it a part of their daily life. I think it's a learning experience because then they can learn new things about like how many like eagles are around here or what's the history about it. So first we had to get up early in the morning and then we had to come here and we had to unload things and then we just helped out a lot. Sometimes it challenges your brain and then you can just learn new things. Well, I thought it sounded like an exciting opportunity to enjoy the Wabash River. I'm a water bug and then you're getting to spend time with sixth grade students and learning something about our community, about our Wabash River. One of the kids said he'd never been on the water yesterday, said this was the best field trip he'd ever been on, and he was excited. And it may have piqued his interest into doing something in this field later on. I was surprised at how quickly they took to the water quality testing. And all of them were excited about answering the questions. So they were learning, they were actually enjoying everything they were learning. I think the kids are shocked about what really goes on with the water that we drink and how we get the water that we drink. They have preconceived notions about how the water gets polluted and so once they go through the education then they realize, hey, this is important. It's important what I do here. It matters later on. It matters to a different part of the country. And I think that was what was so surprising to me that the kids actually started to understand that it's not quite what I thought it was going to be. The program has been designed to incorporate state standards in agriculture, mathematics, physical education, social studies, history, economics, geography, science, and more. A lot of these kids have never touched a paddle. Um, you kind of have to walk them through what to do, how to paddle the boat, and you know a lot of the facts about the river, they've never been taught. So it's something to teach the kids, to help them later on in life so they can tell their classmates or their siblings or their parents that they might not know about the Wabash River. I think the hands-on experience is probably better for the kids because you can read a book and you can kind of visualize things, but once you're out there and you have to travel down the Wabash and learn about it, you get a better respect for it because you've worked for what you've learned. You get to learn about the Wabash River, the history of the Wabash River, different things about water quality, stuff that you might not learn in a school. The most thing that surprised me was how thorough the kids were with their note taking, paying attention to what the people at the certain stops were telling them. I was very pleased with that. I think you get a feel for nature. You can sit there and read a book and explain to them about how the Erie Canal was 
how the Wabash River and the Erie Canal work together and how it flows into different things and how the banks is washed away after years and how you need tree life. But until you actually raft down the river and can see the effects of sediment and different things like that, I think you need that experience. This is a good thing for the kids and the adults. Um, reading it in a book is just a book. Um, it, it tells you a lot, but it doesn't tell you as much. And you don't actually like get to do it, and you don't learn how to do it from a book. But from a teacher, you can learn like math, but you can't physically do math. So if you're learning about like fish, and you get to catch fish, that's fun. If you're learning how to drive a boat, and you actually get to drive that boat, that's fun. It's just fun, and it's good to learn stuff that they don't teach you in class. You get to learn a lot more from hands-on than being told it. I learn, I wouldn't say a lot more, but I learn a lot of stuff that I had never learned before. And you can remember it a lot. All geographical locations on Earth are part of a watershed, which forms a common outlet into which water, sediments, and dissolved materials drain. A watershed knows no boundaries except its own, and often crosses political, land use, and ownership borders, involving farmland, housing developments, industrial sites, and even urban areas. Buildings, people, plants, and animals all have an effect on watersheds. Yeah, we talk about the two different types of um, treatments that we have, a physical um, treatment and a biological treatment to remove the bacteria out of the wastewater. We discharge into the Wabash River. We average around 20 million gallons a day. Our um, byproduct is biosolids, and we have a company called Merrill Brothers, which hauls out the sludge and the supplied to farm fields for uh, free fertilizer. Yeah, I think the kids today um, really understand what's going on in the environment and keeping everything clean and nice so we can have activities here on the river and eliminate all the pollution. It's easier to make someone learn about something that's fun instead of making it hard. I got to measure the water temperature and how far down you can see using these tubes and measure how uh, foggy the water is because one day maybe I'm going to be a scientist and I'm going to have to study this stuff. The floating classroom exposes students to the wonderful Wabash and all it has to offer while teaching them the importance of water quality and how our everyday lives impact the water and environment around us. Students stop along the way to test water, study wildlife, observe the fish of the Wabash, and learn the history of the river. I am out here on the Wabash River uh, helping out with um, teaching kids what the diversity of fish looks like in the Wabash River. Uh, this is a system that has a remarkable diversity of fish associated with it. Something in the neighborhood of about 117 different species of fish can be found in the Wabash River. They typically get a lot more excited when they have an opportunity to see a, a live wiggling fish, to touch it, to be close to it. They usually get a lot more excited than just seeing a group of pictures either on a sheet in front of them or just seeing the pictures of pretty fish or even ugly fish. <laughs> Here we're trying to give them some context so that they can have a better appreciation for what it is that is occurring around them and why we need to be excited about resources like the Wabash River. I kind of like doing like science, not like sitting there and like reading a book. I kind of like science like out here more because well, you actually get to experience it. Some of the things that you learn in like elementary school, middle school, that kind of thing, they're like the cement that makes up your mind. So when you learn something, it's like adding a little bit more cement. And when it dries, you can't, you can't very well take it out. I'm gonna remember it for forever. Well, until I die anyway. 
first of all, we need to teach these kids early on because, you know, as we were standing around and talking, a lot of these kids have never been on the water and a lot of these kids have never had any of these concepts introduced to them. So I think that it does start early on. I'm glad that they're starting with the sixth graders. I really liked the fact that they have these uh, areas that we're going to stop at, more like stations, and at each station we're going to do either something that's relative to history or science or a combination of both. They gave us scripts. I had no idea that the Erie Canal came down into the Wabash, even though I've lived in Indiana my whole life. So I thought that was really interesting that the kids were going to get to understand the history behind this. And the other thing, it's a social skill for them to learn too, and a life skill that we need to learn how to respect it. And there, it needs to be managed, but there's a right way of doing it. And hands-on, to me, is always uh, the best way to learn. They're learning, but they're learning and they're having fun. And it's not your typical classroom situation, so I think that's going to be very beneficial for the kids today. The Tippecanoe County Partnership for Water Quality relies on the help of volunteers in order to make this event possible. Volunteers help on both land and water and often benefit from the experience as much as the children do. I would pitch it to you like this. I think it's a great opportunity for you because you get a chance to work with kids that have maybe never been in the Wabash River, never been, able, never been rafting before in their life, never paddled a boat, and they might not know about the history of the Wabash River. And you can learn from the kids and you can learn too. No, I'm just really proud of all the volunteers that have stepped up to actually engage with some of these sixth graders. Um, this is a time in their lives where they need some positive role models, people that are actually out there working in the community, doing good things and giving back. The Tippecanoe County Partnership for Water Quality would like to give our donors special thanks. Without them, wonders on the Wabash would not be possible.